I recently did a video on the difference between variometers like this and vario couplers and somebody left a comment and said, you're going to make a vario coupler, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I guess you know me too well. So the answer is, yes, I have. It's not exactly the same as this. Uh, they did make ball type uh, vario couplers, but there's some things I wanted to do that were different and it would be almost impossible with a ball type. So, okay, well, without further ado, let me uh, show you what I've got going. This is the core, the shell of it, and it's a cylinder. So, obviously, a little different than, uh, than the uh, variometer. And that's where we begin. So, we have this cylinder, and then we put our ball in it. Now, this ball is the same ball as before. Uh, the wiring is the only difference, so this is going to be a separate circuit on its own. And then, this is my prototype. Uh, I made this upper holder hold down in two pieces, like this. And, okay, so that's pretty much it. We just wind the ball, and we wind the cylinder. There's no windings on top, we just wind the cylinder down here and the ball dips into the windings of the cylinder and it either more or less strongly couples so yeah it's a transformer that you can vary the amount of coupling okay so is that all i have to show you well no uh let me show you let me show you the next step so here we are the ball is wound now, the difference between uh, a variometer and a vario coupler is that the ball is one side of a transformer and the other winding is the other side of the transformer. So this, the power goes in here, goes through the ball, comes out here, that's it. Uh, and that's how you connect it. You connect from here to here and, and done. So it's an RF transformer. Um, what else? And of course it rotates. Now this is a beta version of the ball. This is a, a, a version I already had printed up. And yeah, I have got the newer ball out there. Of course the newer ball will work just as well. And here is the bottom side. You can see here are the connections for the shaft. And I use the same uh, commutator type uh, arrangement. So just a brass bushing, if you will, to transfer the electricity. But now let's look on the other side. Let me flip this around here. And let's look on this side. Now, I don't know, can you see that? Yeah. See all these taps here? That's one of the differences. Now, in variometers, you will see taps, but they're not as common. And frankly, to try to do taps on a ball variometer would be impossible. This was difficult. This was hard. On a scale of uh, 1 to 10, this is a rating of, I never want to do it again. So, yeah, it's a bear. But uh, when it's done, it's okay. Now, one of the oddities about this one is that I copied this from a, uh, a very old uh, very old coupler. And it had taps at every 5 winding, so it would be 5. And then it would go four and then three and then five and here's where I messed up this is a four three five four three five four three five so as you go down it's five four three five four three five four three taps um, yeah and I have not yet played with the taps on here uh, but I am kind of looking forward to it because they put them on every one of these and they I'm sure they had very good reason for doing it and again we're rediscovering what the thinking was of people from 100 to 120 years ago um, okay also on this side are the connections for the secondary uh, transformer coil and it just goes here let's see if I'm telling you right that goes from here through the coil and then it passes Make sure you can see that passes through here out again and it's connected to here so I don't think I said that clearly the connection is here passes through here 
up here and then around through the coil. Okay, um, yeah, is that, is that all there is to see today? Well, no, I think, uh, I think I owe you a test to show you whether this thing works or not. So let's get out the scope and the frequency generator and see if this thing will actually couple and decouple RF energy in the AM radio band. So here's our setup. On this side, I have a frequency generator and it's currently set to one megahertz or a thousand kilohertz. Amplitude is 3.3 volts sine wave and that's being output to the oscilloscope which I will punch the auto setting to make sure I got everything right. There we go and as we can see here the frequency is around a thousand megahertz or kilohertz rather one megahertz. Voltage is swinging between 4.8 something and minus. Uh, over here it's set to 3 volts, so we're getting a little flyback. Um, our RMS, I think that's RMS, is 3 point something, so that's about right. Um, so, as I understand this, if it functions correctly, right now it should be fully coupled. And as I rotate this, the amplitude should decrease until, if it's well done, it should go to zero. Dun 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 And there we go. That is pretty much a zero. So yes, that is good. Okay, so let's try changing the frequency. So this is about the middle of the AM band. Let's go to the lower end, 500 kilohertz. Make sure it still works because if it doesn't work in the AM band, it ain't going to help us much. Okay, and there we have, we're coupled, change of triggering. Uh, there we go. And so, yes, that's, that's respectable. So that's the low end of the AM band. Let's go to the high end of the AM band, about 16, 1.6 megahertz. Auto scale it again. Get rid of that and that's all in agreement um, okay still a little bit of wiggle left at the high end so not too bad from the bottom of the am band to the top of the am band it seems to do its job Okay, well, that's all I've got for right now. I hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio experimentation.